Hi guys, today I am going to be making kale chips. If you're growing kale, this is one great way to use up the kale because kale just takes off and you have an abundance of it. And what do you do? You can only eat so many salads or make it into so many smoothies or you could juice it. But kale chips are really nice. They're crunchy and salty and it's a great alternative to potato chips and very easy to make. You can make them raw. I'm going to make raw ones today. How you do that is you dehydrate them. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can definitely make them in the oven. Uh, I just prefer to use a dehydrator so I don't have my oven on in the middle of summer. So it's very hot right now. So, um, But there's two options to do it. So first of all, you need to collect it all. And then I washed it all off. And then you dry it and then you put it in a bowl and then um, we will season it. So I'm gonna go ahead and break it into small pieces. You want to break, break it off of the stock because that's hard and it's not very easy to eat. Um, so you just, some of these leaves, it's perfect. So a little leaf size right there and a little leaf size right here but then the rest of it is kind of all one big piece, so then I just, right off there. So you kind of hold the stock and pull away from it. And then I just kind of pinch here and pull there. And just like that. So I'm gonna pat the other ones dry and put them in here. If they're still a little wet, that's fine, but having them be dry helps the oil to stick to it better. And I'm going to be adding in some of my regular lettuce leaves. I don't really know what variety lettuce this is, it's huge. If any of you know, let me know. I've been trying to find it on uh, Plant ID Finder. But it's huge and it's super spicy. I'm gonna put these in. There'll be some spicy little chips. And when you bake these, they do shrink up a little bit. So uh, just keep that in mind when you are making whatever size chips you want. So this will be, I don't know, a third of the size smaller, I think. So just keep that in mind when you're making them. Okay, so I got a bowl full, and now I'm just gonna pat, pat it dry with my dish towel, run it underneath to kind of grab any excess water that's dripped off while they were resting here. Okay, so I have a huge food dehydrator. Um, I had one before that was a cheapy cheap and it didn't have a temperature setting and that kind of bothered me because every recipe I found said I dehydrate at this temperature for this long and I didn't know what temperature so I wasn't sure how long to do stuff and when I tried to make apple chips it took forever in my just round basic one. I think I just got it from Fleet Farm. So I researched and I found this one and I really like it. It is huge, but it has a temperature, it got a really good rating, and it wasn't too expensive. Anyways, I highly recommend getting one with a temperature setting. So now I'm going to take some olive oil and just drizzle it over maybe two to three tablespoons worth. And then you just kind of work it in and get it coated over all of the leaves. You don't want it, them to be too saturated with oil or they'll be too wet. And then you just lay them out. The prep work for this is a little, a little time consuming. You can have the leaves, but it's worth it. Um, you can have the leaves really close to each other. You just don't want them to overlap because then the, that won't let the moisture escape while they're dehydrating, it would be a little more difficult. All right, so I have that, and then you can add the seasoning. 
I really like salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder. That's really good. You get smoked paprika is really good. I've done cumin before. That's really good. Uh, and this batch, I'm going to try some hot Mexican style chili powder. Um, a friend of mine sent it to me from Texas because I couldn't find this in Minnesota. I'm sure it's here. I just I only went to one store to look for it. So, so thank you, Lisa, for sending it to me. It smells really good. So. I'm going to do it over a towel so I don't get any other and then I'm gonna do a little bit of salt and that's it for this one and then I'm just gonna put it in and I will repeat until they are all loaded up One, I'm gonna do salt, garlic, and onion, and pepper. Oh, my pepper is almost out. about this nutritional yeast seasoning so good it's vegans use it as like a cheese option I'm not vegan but I really love this um, it's got inactive dry yeast niacin B vitamins full acid so it's super good for you and it's delicious I we love putting this on popcorn when I make it homemade air pop popcorn so good. It's cheesy and it's good for you. It's got vitamins in it. My daughter loves it. She licks the bowls when I make it popcorn with it. So she like scrapes the bowl with her fingers and licks it off. So very good. So this and a little bit of salt for a couple of these. Alright, so I'm going to keep going to finish this batch, but Y'all don't need to watch that because you've already seen the method. So if you want to keep them raw, you can dehydrate them. You dehydrate at 110 degrees for eight hours. So this is perfect to do overnight or while you're at work, and then they'll be ready when you get back. The oven method it is much faster, but, and sometimes I'll do that when I want to cook them up quick, but I do prefer the dehydrated method. I've I feel like they stay crunchy for longer. When you make them in the oven, you wanna bake them at 145 for one hour and then reduce it to 115 degrees Fahrenheit for three to four hours. And then you just store them in an airtight container. And sometimes when I make them with the oven a day or two later, they'll kinda lose that crispness. You just pop them in the oven again, maybe even on broil, so they just a very low broil and they'll back up again. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you try this, what your favorite season options uh, combinations are, and if you gave any of them a try. Thanks for watching.